Hello and welcome back to Games Radar and Comic Con 2017. We've stepped away from the show floor to meet up with Pollyanna and Michael to talk about Shadow of War. So let's get started. Let's start with you, Pollyanna, okay. and your character. You can just tell us a little bit about who you're playing and what they're doing in the game. Okay, so as you can imagine, I'm playing a giant spider. Um, <laughs> of course. Shelog, uh, who we've seen in the films already, and this time um, she takes a fair form as well. So the character looks very much like me, but mm -hmm. there's lovely spider elements going on there as well. Um, she is the balancer <coughs> of power. She really wants peace in Middle Earth. She wants, she wants it to go well, but the way in which um, that can happen uh, is not always the way that Tally and our hero wants it to go. So as a player, you're, you're sometimes in question of whether she's, 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 her visions are true. You know, she's a sage in many ways, whether her visions are true or whether she's meddling in things. So she's got this lovely edge to her. And did you get any say in how much of that spidery element you took on in the game? Are um, you like, whoa, I need... Like everything, like, like for every performer, there's, there's, it was a true collaboration between the writers, the director, um, and, and in the performance a lot came out. So I was all ready to spider it up, but I mean, <laughs> these, guys, these guys create incredible visuals, so it really wasn't necessary for, you know, I didn't have limbs attached or anything like no. that. I mean, extra limbs, obviously I had these, but, you know. You need the four. <laughs> <A bit weird. laughs> yeah. And Michael, like this time around, how do you think you want people to play the game? Because obviously it's, it's much bigger than it was before. You can go in stealth or fully in action. How would you want someone to play it? Uh, I think what's exciting about the game this time is people do have so much choice in how they want to approach it, both in that sort of moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of am I going to charge in, am I going to use my followers, and am I going to be sneakier and more manipulative, but also at the higher level of am I going to pursue and follow the story, or am I going to get lost exploring the world and manipulating society within Mordor, um, am I just going to explore and discover the history and the lore in the background, so I think now we've, we've really kind of... Um, broadened it so that it doesn't matter what type of gamer you are, you're really going to be able to enjoy the game as you want to. And what did you learn from the first game to bring across into this one in terms of like mechanics or gameplay wise? Um, I guess probably, I mean, obviously a lot because the first one was our first game in this genre, our mm -hmm. first third person open world game, and that's just a, an enormous like crash course in making these sort of games. But then I think the two biggest things were the importance of the story. So we've really tried to make this very epic story that lives up to what people might hope to see from Lord of the Rings and from Middle Earth. Uh, and the story, and then also the Nemesis system, which was our big innovation last time, where the game actually adapts and evolves and watches what you're doing and tries to you know, create these emotions in the player and really doubling down on that. And then uh, the third thing is actually how to marry those two parts of the game. So the dynamic and personal stories of the Nemesis system actually weave into the themes of the main story and the main story arc. So when we have a character like Shelob, who's about balance and visions and your volition and what you can achieve in this world, then we can set up those themes in a way that the player can experience in a personal and unique fashion as they play the game. So um, both sides of the game really support each other. All right. Now, obviously, Lord of the Rings fans really know their stuff. Like, mm -hmm. Have you got like the most obscure thing that anyone's asked you so far or something that you've managed to sneak into the game in a little hint towards the films? That's probably a good question for you because as far as fans are concerned, we're not announcing until this afternoon what I'm actually playing, so I haven't had that, but I'm sure I'll find <laughs> it. This is the place for it at Comic-Con. Yeah, it has actually been really fun because um, Shelob's character basically is the, the narrator of our game. So she's taking the same role in our game that Galadriel takes in the films. And so she's been really prominent in all of our trailers and so on and seeing people speculate about who she is. Is it Galadriel? Is it some sorceress? Is it Ungoliant, who was this original spirit of darkness within Me Middle Earth? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how do you get into character playing someone like such a high concept type character? Like how do you channel that? In the same way as any other character I play, although most characters I play are weird and <laughs> weird and wonderful. So um, that's something, especially with the physical stuff, I've had a lot of experience with that. Um, really, it's, it, a lot of my research was, was with Angolian because uh, what she went through with her grief in, in her former life is, is similar to, to what she love goes through. So there's a lot of going into a very dark, grieving, angry uh, place of frustration with mankind. Um, but as she love becomes involved with Talion and as she has a chance to really change things, um, I think despite herself, she becomes almost mothering towards Talion and, and really wants him to succeed. Um, so, 
yeah, it was, it's just about getting into the feeling and getting into the play. And, and luckily, when you're working with this kind of talent, you know, it, it, it all really flows well. And, and there's been great back and forth. It was really personal feeling performances together. You know, so. Is it any different working with like games in a game studio than it is on a TV set? Yeah, I kind of describe it like theatre, you know, um, because you have such a large space and it's so physical. And uh, and there's a great suspension of disbelief because instead of being in wardrobe and you know hair and makeup and having the set all around you, you sort of have these cubes and 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 skeletons of things to work with. Yeah. And so I love that. It's it's almost like mask work where you just have to um, you really have to push your belief beyond. And it's exciting. And and finally, if the Nemesis system existed in real life, mm. it does. Does it? <laughs> well, well, then in that case, like who have you got coming for you, or who are you going after? Oh, personal. Is it, is, yeah, is, it, is it someone else on the team? Oh. We're, we're <laughs> <laughs> to, so who have we got coming after us and who are we going after? I think that's definitely a no comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't want to let them know. I'm going to keep them guessing. Okay, well, I'm going to ask the rest of the team, yeah. so we'll see what they say. Okay, yeah. I'm sure Troy will probably have the best answer for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and I just want to remind people when it's coming out and what they can play it on. It's coming out Sorry. October 10th. And yeah, it's on PC and Xbox and PlayStation 4. Hi guys, now I'm joined by Troy and Laura from Shadow of War who are going to tell us a bit more about the game and their characters. So, Troy, I mean, we've seen your character before. But yeah, I'm all hat at this point. Should we just not even cover that? Nah, should we just leave that? Just move on. Okay. Just, it's Italian. You know him. <laughs> you know that guy. Swinging his old sword around Mordor <laughs> as he does. But, um, yeah, but it's great. Uh, I get to come back as Italian and this time... Uh, I get to play not only Italian, but also get to be the performance capture director, so I got to work with our incredible cast, like Laura Bailey. <laughs> hi, I'm Laura Bailey. <laughs> great. Oh, uh, hi, I'm Laura Bailey. Way better. Go with two. It's good. It's, 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 is this how it works on the set? <laughs> good <much>. directing? <laughs> Stay, I'll do that again one more time. Better. And then she punches me. We go back and forth. <laughs> so, Laura, like, you tell us a little bit about your character. Yes, I play Altariel, who is the Blade of Galadriel. Uh, an amazing assassin elf. She is really hardcore and can kick the butt. And what's her role in the game? Ooh, the challenge that we had with uh, with bringing El Tarlan into our story is is making sure that because we've done such a good job of establishing Talion as a strong warrior and someone that as the player plays, they feel like they're a badass that's able to take on a full army of orcs. How do you find and find someone, male or female, that can stand toe to toe with him? So. We found Laura Bailey because honestly, there's no one that can play a character stronger. She's proven herself with the breath of work. She's an incredible performer, uh, and she really came and helped. I to say all of those things. True story. <laughs> Ten dollars. Um, I'm cheap. Um, <laughs> but to be able to find a character that could really come in and really help shape this character, because when we start in this process, we're really early on, and so to find someone that can we can partner with and, and really kind of lead us where the character is wanting to go, we depend on people like Laura to help us do that. And Laura, how do you get into that kind of character? Like, have you got notes? Have you got a routine that you go through? Well, I just do a lot of yoga and uh, a lot of sword fighting right before we start mm -hmm. filming. So, you know. People die. You know. People die. I hunted a lot of orc. <laughs> but seriously, you did do a lot of training. I know, we did do a lot of training. Uh, our amazing stunt coordinator, Tom Williams, uh, you know, would come over to my house and we'd actually spar and he would teach me a lot of moves with the sticks and everything so that I would know what I was doing when we got on the stages. As well. So it's important to point out that like when we're on this stage, um, you know, we've got great character modelers who, the one thing they could tell us was that they do want to have her be a dual wielding um, character. So that's incredibly informative for someone like Laura because you don't want to practice just swinging one sword. You always want to make it feel like it's real. If it gets too dangerous, we always have people in place that are going to help do the heavy lifting for the physical stuff. But it was always really important for, for both of our characters to really make you believe this is something that we would do. So we learned how to sword fight. In her part, I only had to worry about one hand. <laughs> she had to worry about both. So as we're filming, because we shoot these just like you would a TV show or a film, here's Laura with, and understand, she doesn't have what Eltariel is wearing. She has a mocap mm -hmm. suit, which is Velcroed everywhere you can possibly think, in the worst places, by the way. Yeah, it's so flattering. It's <laughs> so flattering. <laughs> with, with a, you know, a, essentially a little computer right here that's, that's capturing all the data. She's got a camera that's attached to her head. And on her back, she has these Velcro straps that hold scrimp sticks 
for her dual wielding mode. So she's having to, to navigate all of that and at the same time still be a character that endears herself to the audience and have the dramatic performance as well. So she really had to do way more. I just had to stand there and go. But you're good at that. I can He's do that. So uh, I can do that, that really well. <laughs> you maybe like you know pat my head and rub my belly. That's when everything's falling apart. <laughs> Walking chew gum. Uh, no. To swing the sticks or the sword without hitting your camera. There is that. Mm. It's a challenge. So the Lord of the Rings, Lord of the Rings fans really know their stuff. Like, yeah. What's the most like obscure thing you've been asked so far? Or are you expecting something obscure like later on today? Maybe? Yeah. The, the, this would be a question for after the panel yeah. because there were some things that people said two years ago when we premiered mm. in Shadow of Mordor. There are people who are like, okay, point of order, and there they go down with canon. Um, I'm curious to see what people come up with. I'm so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, we've got people like Michael DePlatter that yeah. there's no one on the planet that knows more about Tolkien lore than he does. And he's like, well, in the, in the third battle of the first age, when the people came out, he's like, well, actually, I don't know how to correct you there because it was the second battle of the first age. He's the person that can actually speak to all that. So we'll just look to our right and go, Mike? You have a answer for that one? You've got the backup yeah. on stage ready to go. It's good. When in doubt, go handlebars, because everyone trusts a man with handlebar mustache. Really? I find that's true. true. Oh, okay. Yeah. Historically speaking. So uh, finally, to wrap up, if the nemesis system existed in real life, like who are you going after? Who's coming after you? You know, the beautiful thing about voiceover and this world is that everybody's very supportive of each other. Yeah, very and supportive. Yeah, and uh, there's really nobody that I would go after no. except for Troy Baker, yeah. but mm. I can't admit that on camera. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Sure. Yeah. Well, I think it's time to uh, wrap this up. So, uh, Laura Troy, thank you very much for joining us. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll let you go to get the go to the panel, meet the fans. Uh, thank you very much for watching. For more on Lord of the Rings and Shadow of War, keep it here on Games Radar Plus. <laughs>